think it's in the, well, you tell me, the interview you did with Buddy Blankenship. Oh, right. let, let me first of all tell you what I've been doing, Studs, just very quickly. Last summer, I went down to West Virginia and I spent a week with Harold Blankenship. How is he? Uh, he's okay. I mean, I'm what not... What does he do? What does anyone do down is there? Is he working? No. Oh. He has four children. I mean, he's still alive, thank God, because I know that you and Haskell oh, thought... What is, for... is this on now? Yeah. What is Harold Blankenship, who was the bright-eyed little boy, the Appalachian kid in Haskell Wexler's classic medium cool about the 1968 convention, and his mother, played by Verna Bloom, an actress... Our Blankenship was not an actor. He was just a kid, about what, nine, 10, 11 years old. But I bet you I'm gonna be a big star. Might win an Oscar, you can never tell. The movie's gonna make me a big star. Cause I can play the part so well. Well, I hope you come and see me in. He was this kid whom Haskell saw off the street as we wandered uptown, which is an area of transients, a way station for people who've come from Appalachia, from black people in the deep south, Asian people. And here was this kid, and there was so much hope in him. He was so alive, so real in that picture. Now I'm told that he's back in West Virginia's home and has four kids and is not working and his life is a desultory one. And that's one of the sad aspects of our society, probably all societies. Someone who had something, but all the obstacles were there way, way, way back, being put down by the respectables, poor Appalachians were. And then overcoming it and then back again to the same old condition he was originally, only 40 years older. How many years is it? 35. 34 years older. So Haskell, of course, had a great interest in Harold Blankenship. Harold, H-A-R-A-L-D, Harold, it's called. His father, I knew his father, of course, Buddy Blankenship, who died of black lung. He was a black lung. You know, Chicago had many Appalachians, especially miners, where the stuff ran out or where they got black and brown lung and came to Chicago to find jobs, and part of that migration was the Blankenship family. And that's where Haskell found this kid in the streets. He was marvelous, makes the picture. So I guess what's happened to Harold today and his non, what would you want to call it, non-development of growth. So something happened. He had that experience, that moment. But that's one of the sad epilogues to it. You interviewed Buddy Blankenship for one of your books. Do you remember about that? Yes, there was Buddy himself and all his memories and his illness as he was talking. He was really describing the plight of Appalachians, miners and their kids on the hills and hollows. Remember, he represented well, they were from Kentucky or not Kentucky, I think. They were just from, from the West Virginia-Kentucky border. West Virginia-Kentucky border, eastern Kentucky, the West Virginia border. And there's the hills and the hollers. You see the difference, you know? Eastern, western Kentucky is the bluegrass country, Louisville. That's the Kentucky Derby country. That's the respectable horsey set country. Then you cross that highway, Daniel Boone Highway, and you come to another planet. Suddenly the respectable, the clean, the jockeys, and the owners, and the horse people, suddenly you come to the hills and the hollers and the shacks and the black lung miners, and you see two different planets. And at the hills and the hollers that Buddy Blankenship, he was Harold's father spoke about or represented. This is Uptown. We're still, we're living in, up. you're living in Uptown now. I mean, the, do you remember what Uptown the, was like in the 60s? Were you living here back in the 60s or? Living further down, uh, further south than here. I must point out, I live on a half street surrounded by a sea of half knots. So Uptown is a conglomerate mm. of both. 
in Maine, it's a way station, I'd say, for people coming to town trying to find their way of living in Chicago. Many live here and move out. Native Americans lived here for a while, a great many less. Appalachian. Today it's more mixtures. A great Asiatic population here. A remarkably big Vietnamese and Cambodian and uh, Ch Japanese, mm -hmm. and a great Asiatic population here. So it's a company. So this is uptown, which is one of the most multicultural areas, I find interesting areas in Chicago. I should point out that many of these so-called hillbillies, mountain people, and many have gone back home. Home was always where they were from, not where they were at the moment. So they could, an Appalachian guy uh, who could, be a, could have been a racist kid, could find a black kid in the same hometown and territory, they embrace one another. That was their home, where they were from, not where they were. So uptown people very often spent weekends, mostly on travel back home, only spent a few hours with their folks. But did they go many back? Many have gone back now. But did they go back because they were forced out, because of the gentrification? No, I think a lot of them came back because nothing much. They had a job or two here, then they were forced out too. But I think they wanted to come back home, and that's where they were. You remember what you're billed as in the film? I'm a man from Chicago. Now, what was all that about? What was your what? Did you have any legitimate role? To what play? is it I did? Yeah, I was there. I don't know. I found traveled with Haskell. It's an area that I knew. Haskell had been there for some time. The black community and the Appalachian community, and I suggested Verna Bloom, and we found Harold. And of course, others with small parts in it. I knew these areas well, and they knew me pretty well, so I was called our man in Chicago. <laughs> Do you remember when you first met Haskell? Oh my God, I met Haskell when he was a kid going to high school. Oh God, I met Haskell, he was attending a school called Francis Parker here. It was a progressive private school, so I know ever since that day he always loved a camera, you see. I knew when he was 17 years old, I guess. So it's a good number of years. Haskell said he was involved, you or you were involved in the sort of WPA theater programs, is that right? I was at the Writers Project. WPA was the Work Project Administration right. of Franklin D. Roosevelt during right. the Great Depression, when the free market, it wasn't called that, fell on its ass. And they pleaded with the government, please help us out, please help us out. And the very ones whose daddies and granddaddies' butts were saved by the New Deal, the ones who condemn big government. That's when it comes to health, education, and welfare, not the Pentagon. And so we're suffering from what I call a national Alzheimer's disease. No memory of yesterday, it's eliminated. And so I knew Haskell then. I was on the Writers Project. The WPA means Works Progress Administration, which people were hired to be, build roads and the highways, but as well as artists. So there was a theater project, and I, was, I worked with members of the theater project and in a theater group, but I was on the writer's project, and there was a dance project, and there was a music project, as well as those that did blue-collar work. But in the main, it was the government stepping in when that what we call today the free market fell on its fanny. Gracious, I know why they call you the poet of Chicago, studs. To call you the what? The poet of Chicago. I am the what of the, Chicago? The poet of Chicago. Poet? Poet. Poet. Poetry. P-O-E-T? Yes, sir. Oh, God. I've been called many things, but remember that.